name is Dr. Christopher Hamilton. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the Southern California Orthopedic Institute, and I specialize in arthroscopic and reconstructive surgery of the shoulder, elbow, and knee, sports medicine, and joint replacement of the shoulder and knee. In this video, I will be discussing the differences between total and reverse shoulder replacement, or arthroplasty. Patients typically see a doctor due to symptoms of increasing stiffness and pain in the shoulder. This includes limitations and problems performing certain activities, particularly reaching, pushing, or overhead activities due to the stiffness and pain of the shoulder. Many patients have significant night pain that doesn't get better with rest, ice, or over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medications. Many have had a corticosteroid injection, which may or may not have helped the pain, or may not have given lasting relief. A visit to the doctor can help confirm the diagnosis of shoulder arthritis. Shoulder replacement surgery is often done in the hospital. The procedure itself takes an hour or two. During the surgical procedure, a skin incision is made. The shoulder joint is exposed, and often one muscle, the subscapularis, may need to be divided for exposure. The shoulder joint is then resurfaced. The humerus or upper arm bone is often resurfaced with the metal stem and ball type prosthesis that is inserted into the humerus. The glenoid or socket, which is really more like the upper end of a golf tee, may also be resurfaced with a plastic prosthesis. The muscles of the rotator cuff are then repaired around the shoulder. The skin is closed and often a sling or sling with a pillow are used to help protect the reconstruction. Most patients will go home the morning following surgery. By far the most common reason that shoulder replacement surgery is necessary is because of arthritis of the shoulder joint. Occasionally replacements may be needed for complex fractures. Some patients may have multiple problems, including arthritis of the shoulder in the context of a rotator cuff tear. These patients may require a more complex operation, which is a reverse shoulder arthroplasty. This operation changes the anatomy to harness other remaining muscles to help substitute for the deficient rotator cuff. In a reverse shoulder replacement, a ball is placed on the glenoid and the humerus is replaced with a socket, hence the reverse description. In order to perform a successful standard shoulder replacement, a patient needs to have relatively normal anatomy and ideally an intact rotator cuff. Patients that require a reverse total shoulder are often patients that have both significant arthritis as well as a rotator cuff tear that is not repairable. Often patients have had extensive conservative management, including corticosteroid injections, several courses of physical therapy, anti-inflammatories, and still have significant pain and loss of function. Non-surgical management may include physical therapy, muscle re-education, and medications. Both total shoulder replacement and reverse shoulder replacement do an excellent job of reducing pain. My shoulder replacement patients are among my happiest patients. Both operations improve a patient's activity of daily living and pain relief. A standard total shoulder may provide better function if it can be performed. If you require a reverse replacement, surgery can help you with activities such as hair and personal care, reaching the top of your head again, hanging up clothes, and improving the ability to reach. For patients who have been extremely limited, this can make a huge difference in their quality of life. It can help them live alone and can dramatically improve their quality of life. Physical therapy may be started or continued to help ensure that your recovery is optimized. Since patients are often older, your medical doctor will likely be involved to ensure that an operation is in your best interest. The surgery would be scheduled as an elective operation, likely at the hospital. A preoperative visit will be scheduled in our office to make sure that any questions are answered before the procedure takes place. I have been pleasantly surprised at how great the pain relief has been after shoulder replacement surgery. Many patients come back to the office with less pain than they have had for a number of years, although they may still be limited and we may still be protecting the repair. Patients commonly state that the arthritic pain that they have had for a number of years is gone. They do have surgical pain, but it seems to be less severe. The overall recovery process can be slow. Muscle re-education and strengthening can take a significant amount of time. The typical recovery process for a standard shoulder replacement is that patients come into the hospital in the morning of surgery. Surgery will take place and last about an hour. 
Patients are usually kept overnight in the hospital and frequently a sling is used. The next morning, they are usually able to start using their arm for eating, for paperwork, and for computer work. I like to say that they can use their arm between their nose and their navel and in front of their body. They'll start physical therapy later and often go two to three times a week over the next several months. People will improve their activity over a couple of months. Ideally, I'll let patients start to swing a golf club at three or four months after surgery and we keep regaining strength over the next several months. The decision of whether to proceed with a total shoulder replacement or a reverse will be made in conjunction with your surgeon. Much will depend on your anatomy and your age and your activity level. Both are very successful operations and can help restore your function and allow your quality of life to be greatly improved. To learn more about the differences between total and reverse shoulder arthroplasty, please visit our website at www.scoi.com. Thank you for your attention.